Hello everybody, welcome to another uh, Cryptical Airplane update. For about uh, six months now, I've been pestering uh, a friend of mine, Bill, to uh, hook me up with a good DLG. Uh, he, had a, he bought himself a blaster uh, a while back, and he liked it so much that he ordered another blaster, but he never built his second blaster. And his first blaster sat there for, for a long time collecting dust, and his second one sat there for a long time in a box and uh, finally after uh, after months and months of, of constantly pestering him I finally wore him down to the point where he agreed to uh, to sell me his uh, his blaster uh, the one that was still in the box so what I have right here should be a brand new blaster 2 uh, straight out of the box and uh, hopefully I'm gonna be putting this thing together in the next uh, the next couple of days, and uh, if you want, you can uh, you can tune in and and see what I do right, and see what I do wrong, and uh, you're more than welcome to to offer any uh, any uh, any suggestions. So to go along with the blaster, uh, as I see it here, and again I didn't open the box, so I don't know what came in the box. I don't know if I'm missing anything, but. Um, uh, I noticed that what I have here, I don't have any type of, uh, there's no manual with the, uh, with the blaster. I went over to the uh, RC Group's hand launch form and did a search for a couple of blaster build threads. And I was uh, told to read a couple of documents. The first is Larry Jolly's assembly instruction for the blaster 2. It's like a five page document that you can print out. And uh, it's got some good, uh, some good tips and stuff to go along with your construction. And uh, also, I got the, this is the hyperflight.co.uk Blaster 2 and 2E Assembly Guide from uh, Vladimir Model. And, uh, I don't know. Uh, this seems to be a, a much better manual. Uh, or this seems to be a fairly complete manual. Uh, I've got, uh, uh, it's got quite a bit of good stuff in here. Um, suggested setups, lots of photos. Now, the photos aren't interspersed in the text, but there's text and then there's a page of photos to kind of explain some stuff. There's even uh, flapperon templates to, uh, to set yourself up for uh, cruise mode, speed mode, uh, launch mode, and uh, maximum thermal mode. And then there's a little uh, addendum, uh, uh, addendum uh, section there to set up a, a different kind of servo. Uh, anyway, uh, those will be the two primary documents that I'm using. Also, if you go into the RC Group's hand launch form and you do a search for Blaster 2, uh, Blaster 2, and, you, you, and you, you go into the advanced options and you set it to only look for uh, thread titles, you know, not search in the text itself, but to search in the thread titles, and you type in Blaster 2, uh, you can put it in quotes if it makes you feel better, but uh, you'll, you'll see quite a few Blaster 2 build threads. And uh, there's quite a bit of stuff in those Blaster 2 build threads that are uh, uh, that's, that's extremely useful. So uh, between the two documents that I have and the build threads that I'm going to find on RC Groups, uh, hopefully I'm going to get this thing together. Along with the uh, Blaster itself and uh, the stuff that came along in its, its little uh, package, while I was at the hobby shop, you know, you can't walk out of a hobby shop without, you know, spending a hundred dollars on stuff that you didn't plan on buying to begin with. You know, you buy a plane and then you got to get all the fixings to go along with it. Um, anyway, I got some uh, heat shrink, uh, one sixteenth heat shrink. I'm not sure why I got this or what I'm going to use it for, but uh, you can never have too much small heat shrink. I'll probably use this to uh, to do some custom servo extensions. I got myself a uh, AR6250 uh, receiver. Um, up until now, I've been using the 6100 or the 6100E, but those receivers are uh, Park Flyer receivers, and they they may or may not have a limited range. This is a this is a full range receiver, and it is designed to work with carbon fiber fuselages. And uh, what they mean when they say it's designed to work with carbon fiber fuselages. It has uh, antennas 
longer antennas and, and it actually has a little bit exposed. So what you can do is you can punch a tiny little hole in your, uh, in your fuselage and you can have these little whiskers sticking out of each side of your fuselage. Uh, you know, you probably want one sticking up and one sticking out to the side or, you know, however you want to do it that makes you feel better. And then hit it with a little bit of uh, uh, hot glue there at the end just to hold it. Um, but yeah, let those little antennas hang outside of the fuselage. And I may or may not, depending on, I'm probably not going to do this, but some people are pulling the covers off the receivers just to save a little bit of weight. I know on most DLGs, uh, you know, if you're trying to be competitive, you want to save all the weight that you can, but uh, I'm not competitive. Uh, I don't plan on being competitive, so, you know, I take that for what it's worth. I got a couple of uh, Diamond servos. These are Diamond D47s, and uh, I really like these servos. They, they're designed so that the, the, uh, <coughs> the servo cable comes out of the side of the servo. So it's not sticking out of the end or anything like on a normal servo. It, it's kind of designed so that it, it'll, it'll lay flush in, inside of a wing, which is really nice. Tiny, tiny, tiny little servos. I love these things. Um, yeah, anyway, good servos. I, I also have some Spectrum DS 60s, I think, DS 60 digitals, something like that. I have this, um, these Dean's micro plugs, uh, four pins, and what you do is you run uh, one aileron servo to one side, one aileron servo to the other side, and then you have a common ground. Uh, this goes between the wing and the fuselage. One piece goes in the fuselage, one piece goes in the wing, so that your wing is easily detachable and you can, you know, you can easily plug in. Uh, but that um, that saves quite a bit of time when you're trying to to plug servos in into your wing. Also, it's it's nice because you don't have to think about if you know does this servo go into the left hand lead or to the right hand lead you don't you don't have to think about that you just you wired up one time and this connector only goes together one way so you wired up once hopefully the right way and then you know you're you're done so that's that's going to be nifty uh i got a uh a hyperion 240 milliamp hour uh lipo and uh, i think this is going to be a real nifty uh real nifty battery to throw in i don't know how much it weighs yet but it's it can't weigh very much. Uh, I'll get some weights on this stuff later on. I got some little uh, easy links. I know there's a lot of ways to do linkages to save weight and stuff, but uh, you know, honestly, I, this is not a competitive glider for me. So uh, you know, I'm just going to put some easy links on the end of the push rods. Uh, I got a. Oh, here's the. Here's two other servos I'm going to be using. JR DS 285s. JRDS 285s, good servos. And uh, finally, I got a GWS speed controller. And I'm going to be using this uh, GWS speed controller as a Beck, basically. You know, $11.50, and I have a step down from the LiPo voltage to the voltage that the receiver and the servos need. Um, I may not actually need a step down. I, 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 could, I know the receiver doesn't care. The receiver will run 8 volts. The servos would probably run 8 volts, but they would need to be replaced, uh, you know, soonish. And that's never a good thing when you have servos that are, that are glued into the wings and stuff. So um, I think the best bet is to use these little uh, GWS uh, speed controllers as a step down and just cut off the stuff that you don't need. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, I also got a, uh, I know this is almost impossible to see on the camera, but I also got a length of uh, steel piano wire, and uh, this is gonna come in useful later. Uh, I, I saw a nifty trick online, and then uh, my friend Bill reminded me that uh, basically you need piano wire uh, to build this plane. And I'll show you where the, uh, where the piano wire comes in later. Anyway, I think that's it for now. Uh, I'm going to start opening things up and poking around with things. And uh, hopefully the next time, you know, in the next video, I'll be able to show you guys the, uh, the plane as it comes out of the, out of the box. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and, uh, you know, keep watching.